Lead code problem number 378, we're looking at k of smallest element in a sorted matrix. So this problem is a popular interview question, and I just wanted to make a video explaining it because I don't think that the current explanations online are sufficient. So let's just get right into it. We have an n by n matrix, and the rows and columns are sorted in ascending order. The goal of this problem is to find the k of smallest element inside the matrix. So if we look at this matrix right here, we want to find the eighth smallest element, that is 13. So we have the first smallest, second smallest, third smallest, fourth smallest, and so on and so forth. So one of the solutions that takes a lot of time, at least for me, to understand was the binary search one. So we're going to be focusing on that. To understand that one, you have to realize that the minimum element is always going to be in the top left, and the maximum is going to be in the bottom right just because of the way this matrix is sorted. So given that, we know that the numbers in this matrix are going to be bound within some range. So let's look at that a little bit more closely. We have on the left endpoint 1 and the right endpoint 15. So all the possible values of this matrix are going to be in the sequence 1 dot 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 13 14 and finally 15. So we're going to apply binary search here because this is a sorted sequence and we think that we might be able to eliminate some candidates really quickly. So first we have to find the middle. 15 plus 1 is 16 divided by 2 is 8. So that's going to be somewhere around here. And before we proceed, we have to look at a helper function. This helper function is going to tell you how many numbers are less than or equal to the number you pass in. So let's say we're going to apply this helper function to the number 8. How many numbers are less than or equal to 8? Well, we have 1, and then we have 2. So we have two numbers less than or equal to 8. So our function returns 2. And we're going to refer to this value as the count. So the count of 8 is 2. Notice that the count of our answer, 13, is 8, right? Because there's one number, two number, three number, four number, five number, six number, seven number, eight numbers that are less than or equal to 13. So the count is 8, k is equal to 8, and our answer is 13. Therefore, our algorithm is something like the following. We want to search the numbers within this range and then find a number that has the count equal to k. And then we can just return that number. So let's see how that plays out first. And if we bump into any walls along the way, we can fix them. So we're at 8 now, and the count is 2. Do we move to the left or do we move to the right? Now, if we move to the left, Let's say we move to 7, and we get the count of 7. Well, the count of 7 is 2, right? Because we have 1 and 5. But that doesn't help us. We want a count of 8. So we're actually going to move to the right, which means that the left endpoint is going to be reset to mid plus 1, or 9. So I'm going to quickly change that to from 9 to 15. And we just by doing that, have eliminated half the numbers within this range. So we're making good progress. And we're going to do the same thing over again. So 9 plus 15 is 24, divided by 2 is 12. So that's going to be somewhere here. And let's see what the count of 12 is. It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six numbers less than or equal to 12. That's still not what we want because we want a count of 8. So again, we're going to move to the right. And we're going to do the same thing here where we reset the midpoint or the left endpoint to mid plus 1. So it's going to be 13. Okay, so let me just fix this really quickly. 
Okay, so now we have 13, 14, 15, and we know we're on the right track because the true answer is, which is 13, is still within this range. Remember, we're just narrowing down this range so that we can search within a limited number of possibilities for the true answer. So we're gonna do the same thing here. 13 plus 15 is 28, divided by two is 14. So the middle here is going to be 14. Now, we run into an interesting problem because the count of 14 is actually going to be eight. And that is match that matches our K so does that mean we return 14? Well, 14 isn't the correct answer, so that would be an incorrect algorithm. So we have to do something a little more sophisticated. So we have to figure out what to eliminate within this range. Well, we know that the right endpoint can be revised such that it touches 14. In other words, we're gonna push the right endpoint in towards the number 14 because 15 has a count of nine. That's not gonna help us, we want a count of eight. So we're going to take 15 and eliminate it. In other words, push this right endpoint further in. So then we're gonna reset the right endpoint to the mid, which is 14. So notice we have a pattern going on here. The right endpoint gets reset to the mid, and the left endpoint gets reset to mid plus one, depending on their trigger conditions. So we're in the range 13 to 14, and we're trying to find the mid. The mid is gonna be 13 here. So we're gonna do the same thing over again. Since we are in the range 13 to 14, and our middle, is 13, we're going to readjust the right endpoint such that it touches 13, or we're gonna push it further inwards. So the revised range is gonna be 13 to 13. So now, notice that the interval only includes one number. And this is where the for loop ends because you have no more numbers to eliminate. Your interval contains one number, so you can either return this left endpoint or the right endpoint. It doesn't matter because it's inclusive and there's only one element in the interval. So we get the correct answer at the end. There's one more thing we have to explain before this algorithm ends. And that is how we develop a fast way to find the count of a number inside this matrix. So let's say we want to find the count of nine. Well, notice that we take advantage of the way this matrix is sorted. It's sorted along its rows and it's sorted along its columns. So we can start at the far right end of the first row, and then we check if this number is less than or equal to the number we're checking against. So remember, we're checking the count of nine. Is nine less or equal to nine? Well, yes. That means that all the numbers along this row can be immediately added to the count because the numbers to the left of nine are guaranteed to be less than or equal to nine. And then we can just move on to the next row. Is 13 less than or equal to nine? Well, no. So we don't want to add all the numbers along this row to the count. But what we can do is move one step to the left and consider this column. Okay, is 11 less than or equal to nine? Mm, that is a no. So we're going to move one step to the left. Is 10 less than or equal to nine? Well, no, so we're gonna move one step to the left. Oh, we're out of the matrix, which means the loop will end. Therefore, we have a count of three. So you see here that we're taking advantage of the way the rows and columns are organized to find the count very quickly. Okay, so let's get to the implementation. 
So first, we're going to have to declare a variable n, which is going to, just going to be the length of the matrix. And this just represents the n by n matrix that is in the description. So after that, we're going to create a left variable. And this is going to be the minimum, right? We're going to take the minimum, maximum, set that as our original range. So that's going to be top left element. We can call this matrix min to make it more readable and matrix max. It's going to be bottom right. Okay, and we're going to create a while loop like this. So after that, we have to make sure that we calculate the middle. And like we said, it's just the two endpoints, integer division by two. Okay, now we have the middle. Now if the, the count, let's just say I coded a my count function and it takes in the matrix and the number. So that would be mid. If that is less than K. So the count of the number I'm currently at is less than K, which means that I have to move to the right, which means that I'm going to revise my matrix min such that it is mid plus one. So I've basically eliminated the entire left half of this range. Otherwise, I'm going to set my matrix max equal to the mid. Because in the else case, that would mean that the number I'm currently at has a count that is greater than or equal to k which means that we want to start moving to the left. So we're going to push that right endpoint inwards. And if you don't understand that, please go back to the drawing I made earlier and see if you can reason about why that's true. So at the end, we simply have this loop going over and over again. And again, I said you can return the left or, or the right or in this case, the matrix min and matrix max. So I'm just going to choose matrix max. Okay, next we have to actually code the helper function. Okay, so we're going to create an n variable here again. And we're going to set a row equal to zero and a column equal to n minus one. And then we're gonna say while, while the row is less than n, and the column is greater than or equal to zero, we're going to do some logic. So remember, we're going down rows, which is why it has to be less than n, because we don't wanna go out of bounds. And we're going to the left most columns. So if we ever exit the matrix by going too far left, this loop will stop. So if the element we're at is less than or equal to the, the number we're taking the count of, then we're going to add that entire row or what's left of the row to the count. Okay, otherwise, we're going to have to move to the left column-wise, right? So we're going to subtract one from the columns. And then if it's ever in this case, we have to move on to the next row, right? So row plus equals one. And then at the end, we can just return the count. Okay, so let's see how this runs. Okay, great.
Okay, so we got a pretty good result, faster than 100%. And notice that the time complexity here is big O of n log of max minus min, right? The maximum element minus the minimum element because that's the size of our range. And we're doing a binary search. And in each step of that binary search, we're executing the count function, right? And the count function is just going to be linear time. Why is it going to be linear time? Because at each step of this my count function, you're going to be eliminating either a whole row or a whole column. And it's going to take n steps of those eliminations to get you to your answer. So overall, it's big O of n log max minus min. Okay. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please leave a comment or a like or subscribe, and thank you. Thank you again.